What's poppin', what's crackin', what it do, what's up? I'm doing a quick video talking about the last 10-ish minutes of Destiny and Nick Fuentes talk. Two things out the way. I'm not gonna talk about their arguments and disagreements stuff, um, and I'm only gonna talk about what you see in the title, the views on IQ and race. I just wanna talk about that specifically. Other thing I wanna get out of the way, I don't like Nick Fuentes. I just want to say that just to the, I, I, I think he's just a racist, and I think he uses information that he's seen related to IQ to justify his racism. I don't think everybody that has the same thoughts for us about IQ are like him, but we'll, we'll dig more into that. Let's just get it started with the first thing. Nick seems to think that Destiny's floundering when it comes to answering questions about race realism or IQ in relation to race. Uh, when asked, on, I don't remember the name of the podcast, I'll put it in there. When asked, um, does he think that there is, uh, like there is some true correlation between race and, uh, and IQ, or he didn't make a specific statement. Obviously, we, we all know that they're, well, I, I don't know if this is obvious. If you don't know, black people test lowest when it comes to IQ amongst the predominant races in the United States. I don't remember where Asians rank, but I think they were, I think they were saying like Asians here, here, white, blacks, so white people test the lowest on that. And so Destiny's work was like, okay, well, I think there's interesting reasons for that. And I think Nick thinks Destiny's floundering by talking about what could be the influence behind why these IQ scores are what they are. Um, and it's like, is it because of genetics? Is it because of environmental factors? And he's basically agnostic on it. He didn't say it wasn't the case. He didn't say it was the case. It is hard to say. Nick thinks Destiny's floundering. I think that's really interesting because Nick said, like, you're not willing to stake out a hard position on it. You use these anecdotes, you use this. Then Destiny out loud says, I've done 15, watched 15 hour um, um, scholarly lecture about it. They researched a bunch of different papers and their takeaway conclusion after him and his chat, their takeaway conclusion was, it's hard to say, I don't know. I feel like he would be more likely to have a reasonable, you know, his answer should be should be taken some seriously. Like, okay, he's done some research. And he, I don't know, after doing some research. I mean, he's agnostic on the point. He asked Nick if he's done any research. He has not. His research simply was, uh, what was it? I look at society and then you look at how, you know, how blacks are, you know, the crime rates and whatnot, and how they're doing in school and the wealth inequality and social inequalities, almost taking a look like, look how horrible life is for these groups of people, and it seems to track with these IQs. Clearly, it seems to be a genetic thing, and that's just, that's it. That's this little surface level observation of it, and that's dumb, obviously. So obviously, that's dumb. Um, and I'm gonna quickly explain why I think that's dumb. And this is also going to be a short teaser for a video essay that I'm going to do. Yes, I'm going to do a video essay. I don't like most video essays on YouTube. I just think they're kind of boring. Um, but I think they're useful, and I think they get a lot of views, so I'm going to try and do that too. But my short understanding of why I think Nick and anyone who thinks like Nick is wrong is this. Look, clearly, well, we know Black's score lower. On test. That's the, on testing, on SAT testing, any standardized testing, um, and IQ scores are no different. My race simply does do that. No disagreement there. I'm not angry about it. It's not something I take issue with. That simply is the case. If it in fact turns out that just by nature of being black, you have a lower IQ, I guess, I guess, I mean, I guess that happens. Whatever. I don't think it's the case. But if that is the case, it's not no skin off my back. Is that because I may think I'm the outlier? Okay, now let me stop, all right. <laughs> no, but I don't think that's the case. Um, I think it's a little difficult to tell because, I think it's a, okay, let me stop for a second. I think it's a little difficult to tell if it's a genetic reason or if it's a cultural reason. Understanding what happens in black culture um, it's pretty significant to understand a lot of statistics. Um, the the 50th, uh, 13, 
50, the 50% 50 of all crime is committed by, oh, violent crime, committed by like 13 or 14 percent of the population statistic. Um, so that stat is obviously saying that black people only make up this percent of the population, but make up 50 percent of the violent crime that is reported in the United States. Um, we could shortly dig into that without doing like a specific analysis. I'll get into a deeper one of that in my video essay, but I mean, okay, so you've got gang violence in an area. Gang violence seems to be really common in black communities. Why do you think gang violence is common in black communities? Um, well, my short answer is um, in low income areas seem to increase the, possibility, the probability of uh, gangs. I mean, we had a lot of we had a lot of gangs during the worst times, like the 1920s, uh, during any economic recession, it's just gangs seem to increase in abundance. People need to find new ways to protect themselves against each other when resources are scarce and they want to steal from each other. So if violence is going to increase, if violence is going to be an issue, you want to team up with other people to protect yourself. You create an in-group. It's like, this simple. So, uh, how do gangs take care of themselves? Um, do drugs, robbing people, or just easy ways to find yourself. So that in itself can make up for a lot of the, the murder portion. Uh, now we've got a culture in which, like, like because blacks were go likely going to be poor as a result of, you know, you got your slavery, you got your Jim, Jim Crow, you got your redlining, you got um, uh, schools, school districts not allowing black people to go to the same areas. And even when school districts were allowed to intermix, um, you know, they were going to the worst schools because they were in public schooling where a lot of kids would range from either private schooling or there's more tax dollars going towards education outside of the inner city schools where blacks are likely to go. Even if you live in the inner city, you, if you have a medium amount of money, you'll send your kids to school outside of the inner city. So all that can contribute to your income level. Your income's lower. You're more likely to be um, in a violent area because you have to do, you might do different things to either protect yourself or create a group. Now, that's just the starting point. Outside of that, I think there's a cultural impact of gangs. Say your older brother is in a gang. If, if that's the case, you probably view gangs a little differently than if no one you know is in a gang and all you hear about them is that they do dangerous and violent things to people. But if what you're hearing, your community is like, okay, well, this is what a man does. This is how a man would spread. Especially not, this is how a black man does it because society doesn't want you to win. Even if society doesn't care if you want to lose, Say society is not racist, but you live in a group where essentially you're getting propaganda that society is waiting for your downfall. And this is the only way you know how to do it. So you go to school, you struggle in school, and instead of trying to find resources, talking to your parents, talking to other people, and trying to do it for school life, I'm like, this sucks for me. I'm probably not going to get a job. Everyone says so. I might as well just, even if I don't join said gang, I might as well do some of these activities that everyone else does. You see an older brother doing something, he's stealing cars, he's stealing, well, I want to steal, maybe it's not a car, maybe it's still something, it's, it's, it's like you, you do what your family does, or your cousins do, or your friends do, what the cool people in the neighborhood do, like, and I'll leave it at that, like, that could be the cultural influence of violence or gang violence, even if it's not specifically a gang, but family and gang violence can influence young generations to do that, even in situations where there isn't some systemic thing stopping them from being in that scenario. For myself personally, I don't have well, I don't, I don't have any close family members that um, were in gangs specifically. I had one uncle who did a lot of drugs. I had two uncles who did a lot of drugs, but my mom was from church going very frequently. Um, my dad wasn't into that stuff. His family was making their not into that type of thing. I personally, I'm, and also I moved from the more dangerous city to a less dangerous city by the time I went to middle school and elementary school. I was removed from a lot of potential influence that could leave me in a um, negative area. I'd always said, when you, you know, if I hadn't moved to the city I moved to, who knows what I'd be involved in? I mean, I don't act or talk like a lot of people would assume I would act or talk like, unless I'm in those neighborhoods. I'm a talk. Hey, I'm a talk like a nigga. I'm hanging out with niggas. Let's keep that shit. I ain't going shit. I mean, I'm proper, but I ain't that proper. Anyway, point is to say, I feel like. But that was just, that's just simply my experience. Some of it, like, it's not, it's, that, that isn't something that's coming from research. Like, it's pretty easy to see how we can have these influences influencing the culture that makes you, for one, more likely to do violent things or petty, like, violent thing includes, like, theft, uh, 
just jumping people, robbing them, murder, whatnot. It's a cultural influence you to do these things because this is what you're taught. You're taught, not through being told, but taught through just you experiencing what you're seeing. That's just what people do. And then secondarily, why would you probably lessen school again? Well, your schools are on average worse than other schools are. Like public schools do worse than private schools already. But inner city public schools do even worse. Um, you know, any budget cuts to education, it, it's it's hit really hard. Especially if you're a low income family who can't supplement, say you can't, they don't have books at the school for not books, like any resources that you may need for school can't be supplemented by the parents. I mean, like if there's something that you need the kids to buy at a private school, if they're able to send the kids to a private school, they can probably afford anything else they need to do. Extracurricular activities. A lot of kids play football and basketball because that's all that's really offered a lot of the times. I mean, that's that's what you're going to do for your fun. Look, all this is to say, I think there's pretty obvious cultural reasons that could influence crime statistics, school testing scores, and I think this also leads to IQ scores. We're going to stop it soon after this, but it seems to be... It, say, Say your say your brain's just the muscle. Say your ability to seek understand patterns and uh, form logic, uh, and in any of the other ways that you, parts of your brain that are tested when you're doing an IQ score, um, even your reading comprehension levels. In white households, well, let's just say in poor households, in poor not in violent communities, those things that people are going to do for their babies, like was from what I'm seeing, are very very different what's happening in middling income or non uh, in a household that's not in a violent community like it seems to be that i see how some of when i go back to where i'm raised i see how they treat babies they're not trying they're not reading with them like even just like just look you know how you read a, a book or a bedtime story to a little baby or little kid even if they can't understand it like you know trying to get them to say if it was a, your, their name in other sentences they let they take whatever amount of time is possible to do that. They don't. They're not accept. Not this isn't everybody. A lot of parents do, but a lot of parents are concerned. If it's a single mother, she's got a lot of stress. She's probably not taking the time to sit down and make sure each one of her kids have mastered reading levels, especially once they can functionally talk and read. And like, okay, well, they can figure it out themselves. They can pick up a book, unless it's the Bible, maybe. My mom did do that. Very, like she looked up different techniques to make sure that your kids have the best chance in the future. Like all of us had amazing reading levels. I mean, amongst my siblings and family, we do really well. It's anecdotal, anecdotal. Like every testing form that I've done, all my siblings have done really well. We just did different things than even my cousins did. We test higher and better than them. Not my cousins, but like other people. Maybe it's simply because of the environmental factors, our experiences. Or maybe my mom and dad were also just really smart, and their parents were really smart. I don't know enough about my grandparents on either side to say, but look, we're going to leave it at that. Seems like IQ, prob it's not unreasonable to say that the influence is based on, you know, environmental factors. From what I've seen... I'm going to do some more research. I was going to do some more research. I don't want to say this kind of clearly. But from what I've seen, it does seem like simply changing income brackets seems to correlate with IQ levels, regardless of race. If something just the income level doesn't seem the case, it seems like the race really losing point is significant. One last point. One of the things that seems to be people are pretty convinced. I was like, okay, well, look. You see black people before, like, here's a thing. Oh, if, I'm, if I beat somebody in a race, like, of course you want to be black. Like, you know, it seem, like, they seem to see differences in race when it comes to uh, height, um, sports, uh, quick takes muscles and whatnot, like the way that your muscles actually respond to certain stimuli. People are really willing to be like, okay, well, that's an obviously an influence by race thing. I think there's more data to suggest that. Uh, the thing is, I think... The way that brains develop are more complicated than the way that muscles develop. And the way that even a digestive system develops, like there's certain things that certain races are less likely to be able to digest eating. My theory, we're gonna see, we're gonna find out. My theory is that what's necessary in the process of evolution for making a body more apt to running fast, 
even you know quick twitch like reflexes like um if so, like say you're uh fighting or even driving or something like that uh and it, like any of the, the the motor skills required for physical activity it seems like what's necessary for those to uh for those traits to change and evolve can happen in a shorter time period than what's necessary for something as complicated as iq to evolve in fact over the span of time in which it would have evolved we didn't plus couldn't test for iq we just had some societies that seemed to do really well but very small portions of them were responsible for decision making even i mean you look at societies where whites were doing really really well how many of these whites were reading right for people that communicate, but like, how, how literate was all the Greeks and Romans probably are usually the best examples used, but the wealthiest stuff that we're able to read, and the traders of our times were able to read from, like, making, uh, it's easier to change, you have, like, some sort of information you can read back and forth. But so few, the small portions of the population would be receiving this benefit of this advanced knowledge education. I don't know that it'd be I don't know it'd be totally different from what's happening in so many other cultures also for such long periods of time other people were not as successful it just seems odd also then again we've got egypt another other example like randomly a population pops up in a further area in which they make rapid advancements and that to that point other cultures simply weren't able to do i mean what's the difference between egypt like egyptians and everyone south of them or everyone to the east of them i think there could just be environmental factors that led to the technological advancements being more likely to pop up and it seems like afterwards does egypt do egyptians still perform better than their surrounding counterparts that doesn't seem well i haven't tested we'll see i don't know if that seems to be the case even amongst black communities okay we're already we're already at much longer than i wanted to be i'm gonna wrap it up now again this is just me doing off the dome thoughts, no research, looks up about, you know, IQ versus realism. I will be making a dedicated video essay. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I've never made one. Um, maybe it'll be 30 minutes. Maybe it'll be an hour. I don't know. But I'm for sure, for sure gonna copy all those weird trends. Uh, maybe get a shout out from like FD Signifier or something. All right. So if you like what you saw, leave a like. If you don't like, What's wrong with you? You're mean. You're racist, actually. I'm racist. You don't like it. Okay. All right. I'm out.